Welcome to Courageous Parenting Podcast, a weekly show to equip parents with biblical truth on raising confident Christian kids in an uncertain world. Hi, I'm Angie from Courageous Mom. And I'm Isaac from Resolute Man. We've been married 19 years and have seen the fruit in raising our eight kids biblically based on the raw truth found in the Bible. We can no longer let the culture win the hearts of children. Too many children from Christian families are walking away from the faith by age 18, and it doesn't have to be this way. It shouldn't be this way. Join us as we start an important conversation about effective parenting in a fallen world. Well, it's good to be back. It's always fun to do this with you, Hannah. It's a good time, isn't it? Yeah, we enjoy talking to you guys, <laughs> connecting, and and just conversing about these hot topics. Oh, yeah. And we really listen to you, actually. Yeah. Sometimes people want, well, how do you come up with your topics? Well, we just listen to what people are asking us. Mm-hmm. And people wanted to know why we homeschool. Yeah. It's something that I've talked about a lot over the years. I've even spoke at homeschool conferences, and I always enjoy connecting with other homeschool moms. But we thought that it would be a good topic to bring to you guys because it takes courage to stand against the culture that maybe you're in and your community and choose to do things a little differently, which is what we had to do. Now, I used to call it curated education because- We didn't like the title homeschool. (laughs) We didn't like people stereotyping us. And and it was curated. It was like, oh, we take a piece of this, a little bit of this. We believe this is important. But whether you homeschool or not, I think this will be edifying to you because uh, we're all supposed to take responsibility for our kids' education, whether they're in public, private, or- Home educated. That's right. And to realize that, well, it takes courage to actually own that, right? To own that jurisdiction, to go, okay, my kids are my responsibility. I should know what they're learning and I should be more involved with it. And so regardless of what you're doing, that's what we're actually calling you guys to do, to rise up and to take ownership over that responsibility to be involved in your kid's education because it's super important. Yeah. So, And um, if you never want to make it an idol. Okay, that's just yep. a warning real quick. You right. should listen to our other one about not making your family an idol. Which our other people, podcast. Our other yeah. podcast, mm-hmm. but that would be very similar to a podcast done, yep. Don't Making Homeschooling an Idol. Um, but it's it's just really important not to. And when we idolize something, then we start to think poorly about anybody not doing that thing we're doing. Right. And that is not it's not okay. Unifying. It's not okay. God actually talks about it. If you're convicted about that, of maybe being judgmental of other people, not doing the lifestyle choices that you've chosen to do, then you need to read Romans 14. Yeah. I'll just I'll just put that little plug out there. We're actually not digging into that today, yeah. but I do just want to, um, you know, the whole topic of disputable versus indisputable issues could be a huge topic in and of itself. Yeah. But yeah. we want to talk to you guys about the reasons why we felt convicted to homeschool and we're gonna why give we have you, a strong conviction about that and we're going to give you 11 reasons going from kind of the light more fun reasons into the more serious at the end you know we always get a little more serious and deep towards the end of the podcast so uh hang on yeah. with us because uh you want to get all 11 reasons uh they're super uh important and i think interesting for people to hear yeah and maybe there are some things that we bring up that you haven't thought of before um and You know, part of it, when we first started homeschooling, I'll just share this briefly. When we first started homeschooling, people would come to me and ask me questions like, well, what about socialization? Have you thought about that? And I had to, like, inside I would get fiery mad because I'm like, do you even know me? I've thought about every aspect of this. And to be honest, so we'll get into that. I didn't want to homeschool at first. I was trying to find any reason possible to let to put them in school because I didn't, I knew it was going to be a lot of work. Well, that that was your reason. My reason is I thought they would turn out really weird kids. (laughs) And so I thought, oh, homeschool, how are they going to be socialized? You know, how are they going to do sports? How are they going (laughs) to like succeed in life? You know, anyways, I had some warped uh, beliefs that are really myths if it's done well. Uh, Of course, if it's done poorly, then those myths become reality. Yeah, that's true. So there are a few things that we, before we jump into the first reason, or I guess it's the 11th reason why we homeschool, I just wanted to put out there that there is no judgment or condemnation from us regarding your lifestyle decision. As being part of the body of Christ, we should be able to make different lifestyle choices as long as they're not in sin or 
you know, justifying selfish reasons yeah. and still be able to be in community with one another and encouraging one another and hearing one another. A lot of people make the mistake of, oh, I don't agree with somebody on this one topic. So they throw the baby out with the bathwater and won't listen to anything else. And so if you're somebody who doesn't homeschool and you have a deep conviction about that and you're like, oh, I can never listen to their podcast again, that's really a shame. Yeah. And and I would just, I'm, I'm calling it out because that's not how we should be in the body of Christ. Don't be one of the 11 of the 685 reviews that uh, listens to one. And because we're really straight to the point and we're following biblical truth and we're sharing our convictions as courageous parents, yeah. uh, that you give us a, you know, some poor review or you think, you, know, you think badly about it. Right. Um, we don't all have to agree on everything, uh, but we, this episode, not all of them, but just this one is about homeschooling. And it may be challenging for some of you. And I just said this verse last night when I was leading one of our women's meetings for church was as iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens the countenance of another that is in Proverbs. And God tells us that that is a good thing. That is one reason for biblical friendship. Yeah. And so as we are brothers and sisters in Christ with you guys, this episode might be one of those as iron sharpens iron, you know? Yeah, and and gonna, yeah. So that should be a good thing. We should be running towards those kinds of friendships and appreciative yeah. of having conversations that challenge us to think differently or ask questions that maybe we've never asked before, because that's yeah. how we grow. It is. It is. It totally is. Okay. And as we go into this, uh, I'm going to tell you something that takes one or two seconds that massively helps us out here. Okay. So you might be listening at CourageousParenting.com. You hit podcast. Maybe mm -hmm. you're one of those listeners. You might be okay. on YouTube listening to it, watching the video version, which is also on CourageousParenting.com. Or you might be uh, the majority that's on iTunes or some other form. Wherever you listen, if you have access to iTunes, I'd love for you to go there and just click the review and give us a five-star review. All it takes is a tap and it helps us get into the top list, not for our glory, but for the mission to impact 1 million families and their legacies we feel called to. So would you help us with that? And if you write a written review, that is so encouraging. We got a few this week that are just blowing my mind how encouraging they are. One wow. of them was like, wow, this has been transformational for my marriage. And uh, we, just, we just love that. So That's awesome. I mean, we're talking about just, this is how Isaac and I are, you guys. You're joining our conversation about the things that we've done. Sometimes the podcast, we share things that we've been convicted about. Sometimes we share convictions that we've been living out. Yeah. That's one of today's. And, so. and if you notice, if you ever watch the video version, there's no cuts. So we don't edit anything out. No, of what you, the what podcast. you listen to is what you get. So the, it's um, just there it is. It's yep. not cut. See, there's an um. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Raw and real. Okay. So first thing I want to say, this is our, we have two disclaimers. One is homeschooling is not our identity. Yeah. I think it's very, very important that you don't just judge people and go, oh, they're homeschoolers and stereotype them. I just think that that's important. And for homeschoolers, I think it's important to, to realize that homeschooling's one thing that you do yeah. in training up your children. It's one thing you do as a, as a parent, right? Yep. Here's the other disclaimer. Homeschooling doesn't guarantee your kids are going to be saved. We can't save our kids. No. God does that. Yep. So but we have the most influence. We in do the world have the most influence to in point the world. them to God. Right. Exactly. Okay. But it isn't a guarantee. I have met people who homeschooled and their kids have walked away from the Lord. So oh, yeah. I'm just saying this does not guarantee that your kids will be saved if you just choose to do this one thing. And sometimes over coddling actually backfires on you. So. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Let's start. Number about. 11. When Number you start? 11. The perks. Oh, the perks. The fun. You can vacation when nobody else is. Isn't That's that pretty true? cool. Okay. So the best vacation we ever had with our family was the three month RV trip that we did. Yeah. And that is a perk. It's. It's just, it was so fun to be able to do education on the road. Yeah. Road schooling, as so many people call it. Um, 34 kids, states. That's right. The kids had memorized the geography of the United States. Then we went and saw 34 states. We got to see really um, Fort Sumter. Oh, so cool. Charleston. Savannah, Georgia, seeing the architecture of the squares in Georgia and how the city was actually built by an architect. It was so cool. Down in St. Augustine. The garrison that we walked through yeah. and looking at the living history and the they had soldiers the, the, there. How about the, the lobster shack in Portland, Maine? Awesome. 
Okay, that was our our son's tenth birthday, and he wanted so badly. Of course, to try all the DC in stuff yeah. and you know, middle of America. Oh yeah, going through the we had a private. How tour about South through Dakota, the Yellowstone, all the Smithsonian museums. Anyways, okay. So, but vacationing, it's uh, you can incorporate school in your life, and you can vacation at times when it's not as busy and it's cheaper. Right. Uh, it's it works for your family, for your entrepreneurship, or things like that. I've had my son come with me. On work trips. That is definitely a huge perk. Yeah. Um, also, as a mom that's doing the homeschooling, when I say the perks, the first thing that comes to my mind is I get to be there when that kid lights up because something clicks. They understand the vision. Yeah. They finally get it. Or they start reading for the first time. And then there's also the other first, like losing their first tooth. Yep. Or being able, just the first accomplishments you're there to celebrate with them yeah. and you can do it in any fashion style that you want and yeah. it builds your relationship with your child and so that's a huge perk oh yeah but also like another perk is being able to move at a stimulating pace mm-hmm. that's a perk of not having 30 students all the same age and having to wait for some of them to catch up and not having to put pressure on kids to learn things when maybe they learn it a little bit slower that's yeah. okay yeah. but then the kids that are learning a little bit faster you can give them the next curriculum so there's that is a huge perk yeah actually because then kids enjoy learning yeah so th- those are just some of our perks what's number 10. Number 10 is customization of curated life skills. So one of the most important things I felt about school is that they know how to communicate in front of groups of people. You're talking about public speaking. Yes. Speeches, whether it's memorization and And, then speeches. And I believe that is not a personality driven thing, although some personalities are more given to it. It is an important life skill in today's world is to be confident in doing that. In communicating with people and being able to lead people. So curated life skills, like, so there are natural born leaders and those Mm -hmm. that need to be encouraged in being a leader. We've had both in our family with having eight kids. And when I think of curated life skills, putting them in situations where they are challenged to have to lead, whether it's in righteousness and standing up against kids that are cussing on a soccer team, or if it's actually doing debate or mock trial and and being able to practice public speaking, right? Yeah. But there are other kinds of curated life skills, like apprenticeship. Yeah. Uh, there's other um, people that have mentored our kids uh, more in the teenage years, but that's been Definitely. really, really powerful. That's happening right now. Austin's involved in some really neat things with other brothers that have different businesses and video, uh, you know, videography, photography. Yeah. He's even our son actually edits our podcast. And I just have yeah. to say a public Austin thank you to Tolkien. Austin. He has just really blessed us in being able to get this ministry going. And he is now working and doing that as well, which is really fun and to he'll see be him take, enjoying he'll it. He'll be taking on even more, which is That's exciting. Right. So So there are other things though that are curated life skills that I think are important for people to hear so that they can have ideas because yeah. even if they're supplementing their education, it's important that we are purposefully curating the education of our children while they're in our home. Mm -hmm. One is fine arts. That is something that's been cut out of the education system is painting and hobbies that are more of the creative side, right? Whether it's Something really cool that just happened with Megan is that she loves to do art and somebody just licensed some of her artwork for putting on products like t-shirts and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was so fired up to get paid to do what she loves. She's 14 years old and her art is being licensed. Yeah, that's exciting. And You know, it's interesting about that. So some parents might be listening to this and going, well, that sounds great, but I don't have those kinds of skills. How would I curate my kid's education and teach them how to do that? Well, if that's something that's important to you, seek out other people. You don't have to be the teacher of absolutely everything. You get to curate it. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is fine arts also includes things like piano, guitar. We have over the years hired many young people who are part of our church community to teach piano. Our oldest daughter took piano for 12 years. And it was such a gift to have another young woman who was leading yeah. worship in our church come into our home on a weekly basis, teach both classical and worship music. And, hey, and it, it was just a really I know what some, some people are saying or thinking maybe, well, that's expensive. But there's two things I've always told Angie. I will find a way, I'll do what I can to provide so that we can never skimp on these two things. One is food, so good, healthy food, like organic if we need it or whatever, and And books and 
education and mentors and things like that for our kids. Yeah. And so those are the two things that I decided not to skimp on. Have we had to skimp on vacation sometimes because I didn't skimp on those things? Yeah. Yeah. Because we've, we've had ebb and flow of finances in some big ways, actually. Yeah. And so um, we've had to skimp on some other things, but those are things we try not to. Yeah. And so, you know, fine arts is one. Think of other things that are cut in the education system, like home ec, right? So yeah. curated life skills also includes things like teaching sewing, teaching cooking, yeah. home management, babysitting, technology. So th there's just a whole bunch of ideas right there to get your brain thinking. I really hope that you guys are taking notes on this one. Number nine, we got to keep it moving. Yep. Okay. What Out of it? the box education. Education. Yeah. Now this is a huge one. There are there are many different um, people always say, well, what what type of homeschooling do you fall into? Do you do Charlotte Mason? Do you do unlearning? Do you do classical model of education? And there we, we do real learning. Yeah. Well, no, no I'm there's, just kidding. he's joking. He doesn't, he probably doesn't even know what some of the <laughs> I'm talking about. But the reality mm -hmm. is, is we do an eclectic combination yeah. of all of them. And there are different seasons in our kids' lives when yeah, they are focused on different things. So a yeah. lot of people are always asking me, what is the best, what is the curriculum you like to use? for junior high. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say, I love our classical conversations community here in Central Oregon. It's yeah. been a huge blessing. I love how Challenge A and Challenge B are equipping the kids to be more independent in their education. It's difficult. They're learning Latin, yeah. logic, doing a science fair, doing mock trial. Explain what class, well, I'll explain it real quick. Socratic method of teaching. They all get together one day a week. Yeah. There's a tutor. They're not the teacher. You're the teacher still. This yes. is, this philosophy is great, but the tutors, they're educating them. And you know what they're learning. Yep. And it's a Socratic method, which means that uh, instead of all the learning happening there from like a teacher, they're learning leading up to that day. And then they discuss and the teacher, the tutor is more there to ask moderate. questions, yep. moderate, have people get up and speak in front of others and get critiqued and these yeah, kinds of yeah. things. So they have to read their papers. They definitely are like leading the discussion of and of brainstorming different things. So and they do do some teaching on different topics, but typically the kids come prepared already ready to discuss these things. Because what you want is yeah. an independent learner, not somebody that's taught just to sit in a chair and, and regurgitate. listen and regurgitate information <laughs> and take a test. Yeah. What you want is someone that's striving to learn and accountable to teaching what they're learning, sharing about it. Um, all of those things so that there's a, a real deep accountability during the week yeah. leading up to that. To well, and what I like about it is it takes it from the dialectic memorization or, uh, you know, type of learning to the rhetoric yeah. of they're actually teaching what they've learned, which if you know anything about learning, you understand that when someone is able to teach something, then they've actually got to the pinnacle of understanding the material, which is what we want for our children, right? And so anyway, we went way too much into the classical model. That was not the purpose of no. the out of the box education point of point number nine. There, the, What we mean by that is that you can do delight directed study also. Like what is your seven year old interested in? Oh, they're obsessed with archaeology. You may not realize it, but they love collecting rocks. Or they love and so you, you are Legos. Able to do a study so maybe on they love building things. So maybe part of their project right. is a is a simplified architecture project. Right. And uh, you know, right. these kinds of things. And or maybe they love science and so you buy them a robot making kit or they're learning about electricity or you're doing it, this is the thing though. Out of the box education means the mountaintop is not even your limit. Like now, hats off. You get to decide. And yeah. and this should be fun. Now, okay. I'm, this I'm gonna, should be fun. I know what they're thinking though. Some people are thinking, Whoa. Angie, that is not fun because <laughs> I have to make decisions and I don't know what to choose. Can you please just tell me what to do? Nope. Do you use this or this or this? I just need the plan and I'll follow the plan. So this is the thing. I get this question all the time. I'm really glad <laughs> that you actually said this because I do. I get this question all the time. And can I just say two things that you already know? One, no one's homeschool is going to look like yours. And that's the beautiful part about it is that it's unique to your family. Number two, I can't answer that question for you because there's two huge factors. Your learning style as a teacher and your kid's learning style as the student. And there are different curriculums that are going to suit different kids. There are different curriculums that are going to be really exciting to different types of teachers. And those are two huge questions that parents need to think about. And that's what's actually beautiful about this is that 
it is out of the box. Now, in the box, hold yeah. on, in the box is the education system making kids learn the way sure. that they think they should be learning. Yeah. And that's why some kids are not doing well, right? And so out of the box means you can actually um, adapt your education and the way you're teaching yeah. your kids to a way that they're going to understand. And that makes now, them succeed, That's a hu- That's a huge point. But the next question people are thinking is, well, that sounds great. But that sounds like a path to not passing the test and not being able to get into college. Like, how do I make sure they're actually learning what they need to learn if I'm deciding all these things? Okay, so you just go online and you pull up your state's scope and sequence, and it's going to give you a very average list. Can I just say average? Because really what the education system is requiring of children is very minimal. It's very low, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but it's true. And so you can get a list of the basic like, okay, when they're this age, they need to know all of the states and the geography, which by the way, the kids in the education system are not learning how to memorize where, you know, the geography of the United States, for example, at the level that you can when you're at home. And so, but that doesn't mean that you lower your standards. You look at that and you go geography of the United States and you teach it, right? And so scope and sequence and your state, you can print those off online. That's super helpful. And just something popped in my head that I thought was interesting as we were doing the homeschooling is I learned through Angie that they don't teach cursive anymore. And I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. In Oregon. In Oregon. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Why would we need cursive? Oh, well, maybe so you can read the Declaration of Independence. (laughs) Maybe so when you're looking around in D.C. at the museums, you can actually read what's written. Mm -hmm. Um, Things like that. It's kind of a big deal, actually. I really (laughs) – but but it's a big deal to me because I value being able to read for myself and – what our forefathers have written and I want my kids to be able to, because I don't want them to be played for fools. I don't want them. And this is a legacy thing. Like in 10 decades from now, are your kids going to be able to read the founding father's documents? Or are they just going to take this generation's word for it in manuscript form and just believe what's written there because it could be changed and amended. And that is a really big deal as far as our constitution goes and our rights. But even like reading a letter from great grandma. Yeah. That's kind of important. Now, number eight is stewardship. And this is a big one. This is a big one. Stewardship of time. Yeah. Well, God calls us to stewardship. We could go over a ton of scriptures. We're not going to do that in this podcast today. But if God calls all Christians to steward the things that he gives us well, and one of those things is time. And it is a good stewardship of our time to be pouring into our children and to be educating them purposefully what God's word says about these things. And this was actually the one of the main convictions that like actually got me to a place where I was willing to surrender and and my will and be willing to homeschool because I didn't want to. I liked my time. I wanted to have time to go work out, to go out to coffee with the ladies, to um, have a clean home, not have my kids there, have it be clean for a few minutes at least after I was done versus turning around and going, what, that's out again? Or, you know, and I, I had to give all of that up because I realized that my kids were spending like hours and hours away from me if I was going to put them into school. So when you evaluate that and you go 40 hours a week on average that your kids will be with other people being educated by other people, not with you, that's 40 hours that you're missing the opportunity to be training them up in the way they should go. And so I just had to look at that time and go, hold on a second, am am I doing – really am i stewarding that time best by what i'm doing at home or would it be better steward if i had them at home and i was doing something more intentional with my kids and on the flip side if they're going to a school somewhere whatever kind of school it is and they're gone from for most of the day and then you're trying to get dinner together and you're trying to get these other things going i remember when kelsey kelsey was in first grade a a private christian school yeah and it was just hard to get enough time to um unlearn the things that we didn't want them to know. And it wasn't that she was learning anything like indoctrinated, like the education, the curriculum was great. The teachers were amazing. We loved them, still have good relationship with our teacher. But the relational things from the kids on the playground. Yeah, you can't control how other people parent. And that peer-to-peer relationship is super important. It's important because kids are so impressionable. And when your six-year-old starts coming home, and she's concerned 
about how the other kids are treating one another. We're Your eyes are boys really in first open. Grade. Yeah, and you're like, why can't they just be six and be nice? Turning on a different girl every every other every day. Every other day. And fortunately, Kelsey was under the radar because she was the new girl and had this like beautiful, curly, long hair. Everybody <clears throat> would have wanted to be her friend. But, yeah. but she would she come home well. and she would share these things with us. And we were like, okay, if she's going to spend 12 years straight with the same kids, she's going to become more like them rather than leading them. It's easier to pull somebody off of a chair than it is to pull them up onto a chair. Yeah. And we're all for yeah. evangelism. We're all for kids um, sharing the gospel and being lights. But <clears throat> hey, they need some yeah. serious time with you, uh, that you pouring into them mm -hmm. and dis you discipling them for yeah. them to be ready for that. Right. <clears throat> yeah. You have to make, you have to pour salt into the salt shaker, yeah. as Ken Ham likes to say. Absolutely. So the next one, number <clears throat> seven, is socialization and relationships. See, we're getting into more like serious topics here. This one could actually be a whole conversation a whole, episode. a whole episode alone but ultimately what it comes down to is what do you want your kids to be like yeah i don't actually want them to be like the kids that i see in the public education system i'm sorry i'm not sorry if your kids are in the education system um i i don't know your children yeah but um i have asked myself the question if i could find some kids that are in the public education system that i could literally look at and go i want my kid to become like that then i would consider it and over the last 20 years, I can truthfully say that there has been maybe one or two kids that have come out where I've been really impressed. A few exceptions here and there, but it's hard but to But not enough. I mean, yeah. and it just, that makes me so sad. It does. It really makes me so sad. But but this is the thing is when I would look at the homeschool kids that we knew, mm -hmm. there was hundreds that I could easily say, oh, if my kid could grow up and become like that kid. So- there may be a few over here on this side, but there were hundreds on this side. Yeah. And, you know, one of the big things about this, one of the the big tests was when Kelsey was like six years old and she was planning her birthday party. And I remember her saying, hey, honey, who do you want to invite to your birthday party? Make a list. And she literally was like stuck. Mom, do I have to invite the, the kids that are in my class? Because I want to invite all these kids. And all the kids that were on her other list were all homeschooled kids. There was this stark difference. And it wasn't and so, because of how they're educated. It was because no. of the character qualities of the kids yeah. and the difference. That they were cussing even at six. I mean, you got, I don't even need to get into that. But that was a huge deal was like, mm -hmm. okay, socialization is real. Yeah. And do we want our kids, what do we want them to become like? And to mm -hmm. be truthful, I'm just going to say something. You might laugh at this. But Isaac and I have actually sat around and had a conversation and gone, okay, do we want our kids to be the type of people that we get along with when they're older. And we're like, yeah, we, we actually want to get along with our kids when they're older. We want to be able to have conversations we about politics. We want to love the teenage years. We want to, and when they're adults, right? And so it's like, well, if we want to enjoy them, then we, if we, if we are actually the ones that we're socializing them to, then they'll be more like us. And you want to cure, you <laughs> want to guide them when they're young in, in who to have a relationship with. So yeah. when they're older and they're making their own decisions about that, they have a worn path of understanding, choosing the, wise the friendships and wisdom yeah, yeah, yeah. of who to be friends with. For sure. Okay, so we we just barely. Covered the tip of the iceberg on socialization. By the way, they don't get awkward, but you do need to be purposeful to have relationship and fellowship with other people. You should be going to church where there's godly people, where there's kids. Your kids yes, can you cannot become with. isolated. You as have a to be proactive if you're homeschooling to nurture those relationships, but don't think it needs to be a classroom full that yeah. size of people. And I, I would just say, as far as like the awkwardness goes, I've said this before. If you are not a socially awkward person, then your kid, you're not going to raise socially awkward people. If you are socially awkward, meaning you're not socially aware and you're selfish in that way, then you might raise socially awkward kids. So you really, they're, they mimic us. So we just we need, need to, to be grow. aware. We need to grow. We need to be honest with ourselves. Look yeah. in the mirror. Now, okay. before we go to the next ones, these last ones are so important, but real quick, uh, it's important that we hear from the parents that have gone through the parenting mentor program. This yeah. thing is transformed forming legacies praise god 
that it's happening yeah. because we listen to him. Awesome. He fed us, um, you know, the, the experiences and the life experiences, the scripture to use and all of that. It, mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit was really activated in that. And uh, it is uh, 10 hours of curriculum, but it's paced out. It's self-paced. It is incredible. Um, and the uh, community. The Can results I just that's say, happening. I love connecting with people in the private group too. Yeah. And doing those Facebook lives, every single one is different because the Q&A time is so special, like yeah. new couples asking really awesome questions pertaining to their real life struggles. So if you want a more intimate setting on your own time of being able to ask us questions and get the curriculum, yeah. listen to this. Steve and I realized that we were getting too comfortable with the world's vision of how to raise our children. What Angie and Isaac have done in creating this is literally phenomenal. This program provided awesome scripture-based teachings and just some really great practical applications. This class has just really rocked my world. It has given me a vision for not just the different things that we might focus on as parents who are trying to raise our kids biblically, like how our kids are behaving or what we're doing with discipline, but also the things of the heart. We now have a game plan to how we want to raise our children. We have so many answers to the questions that have been in our mind. It's not just these hypothetical situations or it's not just this, here's what I think you should do. It's let me show you where in scripture this is. Do your legacy a favor and yourself a favor and just do it. One of the best things that we've done this year, one of the best investments we've made this year, and I could not recommend it more. We're no longer fearing dark days ahead, but we're so excited to raise lights to be leaders for the next generation. So awesome. I love hearing that. So what we what do we got next, Angie? Number six is it's sanctifying. It produces a rare fruit. You have heard it said that parenting is hard. Yeah. Right? You've also probably heard it said that anything worth doing is going to be hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard, but good. These are all like idioms that we use regularly. Yeah. And I would say it's the same thing for homeschooling. It isn't easy to homeschool, but neither is putting your kid in public school when you have to detox them off of things that maybe they're believing that are not true. Yeah. There's a whole nother, like if you're really truly going to be a courageous Christian parent, yeah. then you're going to have to do a whole lot of extra work if you put them in school that's different. Like you're going to be educating beyond dinner. Okay. Yeah. Um, but homeschooling is sanctifying. It is a consistent lesson for me. It's sanctifying for me, but it's also sanctifying for my kids. We- now, be honest, honey. Once in a while in this journey, have you been a little jealous of moms that drop the kids off? <sighs> Once in a while. Like regularly, <laughs> I'm sorry. I love my kids. And there are times when I hear of or see other women like- Come on, you must be just like an angel with patience nope. and, and nope. Um, nope. understanding. Nope. You nope. must be a natural educator. No, <laughs> not one bit. Okay, well, that's kind of a weird thing to say. Yeah. So I never wanted to be a teacher growing up whenever people would ask you like, what do you want to be when you grow yeah. up? teacher was like not even on my list. I never wanted to be a teacher. Now look at me here. I'm on a podcast teaching parents about parenting. And you do I've like been teaching, writing, but you never imagined like teaching, teaching your kids. Yeah. Right. And I, I think that what it was is that like, I, I'm not a big kid person either. I'll say that because I, I have a real heart for women, for women's ministries. Um, And I have a real heart for, you know, empowering men to impact the world. Right. Yeah. And so (laughs) it's kind of funny that we have eight kids and we homeschool. But that is just a picture of God in our life and what we have been called to by God and and the where he's brought our hearts and our yeah. minds and that we've been willing to surrender our will it's under more of an his obedience headship. thing than anything. Yeah. And so, but we're talking, so that is sanctifying. Yeah. Like to have to surrender your will to him. It's sanctifying to have to say no to things, to say yes to the harder thing that is maybe sometimes boring. And, and I would regular. encourage you just to pray. God, how do you want me to be obedient in this area? Mm -hmm. And listen, and that's what we did. We did that for how many kids we'd have. We did that for uh, jobs, jobs, education. We're living by faith. And we all are called to do that. It's yeah. not just believing, it's living. It's not, it's walking in the spirit, not the flesh. And I can can I just say too that like you guys Living in obedience is not a cookie cutter thing where everybody's going to look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Unity is not uniformity. I use that all the time in my biblical friendship course. That is like my key phrase is that unity in Christ does not always mean uniformity. Although God does want us to be of the same mind regarding eternal issues. Okay. So we 
as Christians should all have the same mind of raising our kids to love the Lord, yeah. to be committed to him. How we do it, what curriculum we use mm -hmm. is totally an open-handed issue. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next, uh, number five, indoctrination. indoctrination. Now there's good and bad indoctrination. Yeah. We are indoctrinating our kids yeah. 100%. So this is the thing you have to realize. Indoctrination is always happening. Yeah. It's either good or bad. There's no in between. Yeah. Your kids are being filled with something every single day. And are mm -hmm. you purposefully filling them or is media and their school filling it? With what? And what is it? What is it? It's and the actual it, and content. And I don't know why parents are so shocked that their kids fall away or have different, uh, more liberal political beliefs and things like that when they're older than them, uh, when they let everybody else fill them. Well, yeah. I mean, specifically, if you're sending your kids to a school where they're learning like doctrine of demons, right? Or like they're That's learning. That's in 1 Timothy 4, doctrine of demons. If you yeah. Look it up. So if they are learning blasphemous, yeah. anti-Christ, anti-Christian philosophies and teachings, and they are forced to have to believe them and regurgitate the information onto a test in order to get a good grade. Yeah. Why would we be surprised when they're 20 years old and they are not a Christian and they're an atheist? Now, the, it is very clear that you are in charge of what they are indoctrinated with. With. Okay? Right. And so right here in, in Colossians uh, 2 a it says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. That's Colossians 2, 8. We're not to be of the world. And if you're allowing your kids mm -hmm. to be indoctrinated with the world, you're disobeying the word of God. Yeah. I mean, I even think of Romans 12, too. I mean, we've quoted that scripture in a ton of podcasts about you know, not being of this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind, which yeah. is the washing of the word. Like yeah. we actually are called to do that as parents. Um, and then there's, of course, Proverbs 4 comes to mind. Um, my son, give attention, this is 420. Give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all mm, their mm -hmm. flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and out and put perverse lips far from you. Let, Let your lips. eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Okay, ponder the path of your feet. Do not turn the right to the left. Remove feet. So right here, I mean swearing. Uh, do your kids swear? <laughs> yeah. Do you have teenagers that are swearing? That is because they're around people that are swearing. Right. I mean, this is this is actually this a is father. Not to do that. A put father away, put giving perverse lips far to from his son. you. Yeah, and the cool thing is this is a father giving instruction to a son. That whole passage started out with my son, give attention to my words. And so as parents, that is our role to say, my son, give attention to my words. Yeah. Listen to the truth I am teaching you. And there is an indoctrination that happens, and we are very purposeful with the indoctrination of our children. And so is the political agenda of the education system. They, the te teachers are very purposeful with the indoctrination of the agenda there. Oh, yeah. They absolutely. are. And so we can't just be blindsided and go, oh, I don't know why they believe this. They were raised in a Christian home. Well, I'm sorry. If if that's the only, the only indoctrination they've had their entire life is to believe in evolution versus creationism, they're going to grow up and go, oh, there's discrepancies in the Bible. I can't believe this because I am an evolutionist, yeah. but the Bible, you know. So you're creating problems. Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. We need to run the race and yeah. we need to finish the race. And how do you do that if you're allowing your kids to constantly be filled with indoctrination of the world? Yeah. So we've got uh, number four. We're leading up to number one. You're, everybody wants to know what number one is. I know. Now, I know number four is discipline. This is a big one. I would say that the next four are, are each of them alone a good enough reason. Indoctrination was alone a good enough reason to homeschool. Yeah. Um, in my mind. 
Sanctifying was alone a good enough reason to homeschool. But discipline alone is another good reason to homeschool. Proverbs 22 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. When I think of discipline, I don't just think of like punishment discipline. I think about training our children to be living a spiritually disciplined life, Mm -hmm. which is something one we model for them as we sit, as we rise, while we walk, while like all throughout the day. My kids see me doing laundry, moving on to dishes, moving on to serving them, doing school with them. Like, is there a consistent discipline that you are modeling for your children because that's what we want for our kids to be living when they're older. Mm -hmm. We want them to be living that now because it's God glorifying. It's what he calls us to. And so there's this aspect of discipline that's two parts, right? And on the punishment side of things or consequences, correction, how we all know our kids are sinful. Yeah. There are always going to be times where our kids need to be corrected. Yeah. And who better to discipline your children than you? Teachers can't discipline the way you can discipline. You have a relationship with your kids. You're going to be able to go, oh, those haughty eyes, they just rolled their eyes Mm -hmm. at that authority. Yeah. They just rolled their eyes at me. I'm going to confront that sin heart issue. And You know what? Nobody can do that better than a parent can because you have the love relationship. And to be perfectly honest, teachers can't do it because there's 30 kids in their class. That's right. Even if they were a Christian and did have spiritual eyes to see the heart attitudes, they don't have the authority to sit aside and pray with that kid. How can they do that with 30 kids? So discipline is a huge reason. It's a huge reason. Number three is discipleship. This one is one that often gets undone it doesn't happen actually even for the homeschool communities right a lot of people are not they're not aware of how to disciple and today. Uh, yeah. that one is a is a big question that we cover in the parenting mentor program i mean a lot of this is covered in the parenting mentor program but that but one more in depth yeah. that one more in depth yep. because it can't be just covered in a podcast episode it's 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 a what we realize when we're putting that um session together is that there isn't a lot of books out about how to disciple your kids because it's not an event it isn't. It's something that happens every day. So we had to give a lot of examples of what that looks and lots like. Lots of resources That's to use by age. That's actually a whole video. It, isn't it yeah. one? It's a one whole hour of the 10 hours of curriculum. It's and all on discipleship. And there's a whole hour just on discipline. Which is different than the podcast. Yeah. It's a scripted hour. So it is deep content. And then the parenting packet with that has all, all the resources rest, yeah. by age of to use with your kids to help disciple the different your kids. books that we've read yeah. it has so anyways this questions. but yeah. we're just in a podcast here discipleship is key but one thing you can be doing is reading the word of god to your kids yeah and that is the most important book i even think of family bible time right yeah But in Deuteronomy chapter six is a very popular passage of scripture for homeschooling. It says, you shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and take oaths in his name. You shall not go after any other gods, the gods of this, of the people who are all around you. And he's just going on talking about the 10 commandments. Um, But in here, in verse six, just before it, it says, and these words, which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as a frontlet between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. That's Deuteronomy chapter six. You can actually read the entire chapter, but that was verse six through eight. Um, This passage of scripture, we talked a little bit about, I mean, I referenced it briefly in the stewardship of time and just feeling that conviction that I can't disciple my kids with the few hours that I will get that are the leftover hours. Right. And I'm going to say that again, the leftover hours, because kids are exhausted. are exhausted by the time they come home from school. Those Then you get the leftovers at the end of the day when you're trying to bathe them, get them ready for the next day, do their homework with them, feed them dinner, clean and up And by dinner. the way, when kids come home and you ask, how was your day? And they go, good, mom. Well, what did you learn today? Oh, I don't know. Good Nothing. stuff. They actually, that might be true. I know you're thinking that your kid is just not answering you, but it actually might be true because it's not a Socratic method in most cases. They're sitting there, just someone speaking at them, and they're thinking about other things. Because we don't learn best And they could be distracted with technology. I don't know if the technology is allowed in their school. There's all kinds of things. Discipleship is key. And the second one is leaving a legacy. This is This is huge. so crucial. This is a multi-generational vision for your family. What you do with your kids will echo into the future. And what do you want repeated into the future? And which direction is the future going? We already know which direction the culture is going. 
which is it's just going to get worse until the end. Because that's and predicted we're not to and prophesied fear it, in Scripture. We're to lead in it. And how are you going to create leaders yeah. in a deteriorating culture if you're leaving a legacy of them being indoctrinated by the world? Yeah. Listen to this, you guys. This is Psalm 145. At the very beginning, verse one, I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, even if it's getting bad. Let me continue. Verse two, it says, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Verse four, one generation shall praise your works to another generation and shall declare your mighty acts. That is is the legacy that we want to leave. We want to leave one generation praising God's works Mm -hmm. to the next generation. And what are we doing when we're raising our kids to love the Lord and we're teaching them while they're in our home? There may be that, there definitely, not maybe, there definitely are those mundane moments where every single day it may look the same to be getting the phonics curriculum out and sitting and listening quietly while your child is fumbling through trying to read to you. Those can be hard years, especially for moms that they didn't ever envision themselves homeschooling or they have a hard time remembering the why. This is the why that you are developing a close relationship where your kid feels like you love to sit and just listen to him try to read and that you're for him. And and when you speak mm-hmm. biblical truth into his life, do you think he's going to be more apt to listen to you and believe you if you've developed and cultivated that kind of relationship? Yeah. It's a really big deal. And mm-hmm. you're modeling for them what they then should be doing with their kids. Do you think the education system is going to get better in the next 20, 30 years? By the time your kids are educating their children, it's going to be a must that they're homeschooling. Yeah. So the final one is the mission or the why. Okay. So the mission, it's also a mission, meaning this is one way that I have been encouraged, encouraged myself, preached to myself that I'm part of the Great Commission, Mm -hmm. is that I am discipling. The Bible says, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all my commandments. Who is going to be teaching my children all of the Lord's commandments? They're not going to be learning it in the education system. So for me, it is a mission. It is the Great Commission to be teaching my kids His commandments and making disciples. And if you don't teach them when they're young... They won't ask for your advice when they're older. No. Whether, wh- however you do school, just make sure you be- remain the most important authority and teacher in their life. Otherwise, when they're older, they won't be asking There is you. a competitiveness. Oh, you don't know that. You don't have a degree in science. I had that attitude. Academic elitism. I to- it is academic elitism. And it's a whole like comparing somebody's knowledge to somebody else's knowledge based upon degree, which is totally, what does the Bible say? That God's going to um, frustrate, the, frustrate knowledgeable. the knowledge of the knowledgeable and the intelligence of the intelligent. And yeah. No. So the why. This is my why. I encourage all homeschool moms and dads to figure out what their why is, what their mission is, because homeschooling isn't easy. And you need to remember the why so that you keep going. And when it comes to the why, there's a difference between conviction and calling. Like for us, it is a conviction Mm -hmm. to do this. Okay. And so convictions, I just want to encourage you again, like we said at the very beginning of the podcast, when we said, don't judge other people who are not doing things the way you do when it comes to life choices, Mm -hmm. it's a conviction. It's our, our personal opinion has become a conviction of ours. We hold it open-handed to the Lord, willing to do whatever he asks us to do. But we also have felt called by God because of how he's impressed things like the Great Commission upon us and just feeling like, honestly, I'm human. I don't have the time to truly disciple eight kids if I have them in school and have to detox them all. I'm not superwoman. I'm aware of my weaknesses and I have to do this in order to even have a chance of actually obeying God in rising up and teaching my children. And we want God to say this of us in Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. So thanks for joining us. We hope this was helpful. Please share it and help the mission of impacting 1 million families. See you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode. We wanted to quickly tell you about our six-week online parenting mentor program. Isaac and I created a powerful biblical curriculum. Here's how it works. Each week, Isaac and I release a video with a downloadable parenting packet to make it easy for you and your spouse to incorporate those teachings directly into your parenting. 
It's an incredible program where we cover everything from obedience, training, to overcoming mistakes most Christians are making. But more than that, it's an incredible community. You'll have access to our private online group, live webcasts, and the Courageous Parenting text message line where Angie and I can send you weekly encouragements straight to your phone. If you're interested in joining our next online parenting mentorship program, secure your spot now at CourageousParenting.com. That's CourageousParenting.com.